and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be doing the level 65 armor quest. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we are here in Kugane at Pier 1 at 8.15. So we need to talk to Blanston Buster. So the quest is called Forging with Scales. And we'll get the ability manipulation 2 and some new equipment to use if we want to. So Blastina is eager to begin his first lesson. So well, if it ain't me fellow apprentice, been keeping busy. Myself, I've been watching over Master Fugetsu's shoulder as he works, and learning a few scraps of Far Eastern armor crafting. The whole way they approach the craft is different, from the materials they choose to the process of putting the pieces together. And now that Master Fugetsu is finishing up the commission work, he'll be free to instruct us in his methods firsthand. I'll finally be taking me first step towards me goal. By God's beard, me bloody hands are trembling at the thought of it. Right, let's get, go and learn our first lesson, eh? Cool. So let's do it. So, you have been most patient, my apprentices, but you need wait no longer. Our commission is safely filled, and now... Sorry, and I can now devote my full attention to instructing you in our traditional methods. Let us begin by examining the differences between the Orzian and um, Hingan plate armors. The most obvious being that while your suits are crafted from large, carefully shaped sheets, ours are made up of many overlapping scales. The scales themselves are often made from hardened leather, but for your lesson I think we shall forge them from metal. This will allow you to craft a durable yet flexible piece of armor. In this land we are especially conscious of protecting against arrows, and this emphasis has led to the design of long hanging sleeves and the like. I imagine the appearance is quite unusual for those unaccustomed to the style. But that as it may, may these scales from the foundation of Hingen art um, of armor crafting. As an introduction to the basic technique, I have decided to have you craft a pair of armored gloves, otherwise known as Kote. Speak with um, Unryu, and as before, he'll provide you with all the materials you require. These Kote of yours, do the folk what wear them ask for or in particular? I want to make certain I focus on the right bits. Ah, then perhaps you might wish to speak with a warrior directly. I am sure one of the blades of the Susu Gume Barracks would be sufficiently intrigued by your query to offer an answer. The Barracks, eh? Right, I'll go and have a bit of a chat, then get straight to work. I'm eager to see how you incorporate the results of your investigation. Cool. Right, so let's go to there. So we should teleport to the barracks. There's the Aethernet right there. Barracks, there you go. Cool. So we have to go this way. Been having so much fun in this expansion. It's so much better than Heaven's Sword. <laughs> I barely even scratched the surface of it. So yes, who are you, and what business have you with the Seku Gumi? Where are yourians, apprentices to Master Fugetsu? Uh, we've been tasked with forging some kote, and I thought I'd ask a proper warrior about the kinds of gloves he prefers to wear. Ah, a worthy subject of discourse. While protection for the hands is paramount, I would say that the finest coast must also afford a full range of motion for a wielding, wielding a blade. One cannot hope to exploit an enemy's fleeting misstep if one's hands are bound by blocks of lead. A full range of motion, eh? That's the sort of thing I wanted to hear. Thank you, sir. 
So from the sound of it, we'll be needing a metal that's both light and durable. If we're to achieve the right amount of flexibility and protection. Let's get working on some basic titanium gloves. I'll craft other bits and pieces and then we can put a, the lot together for our presentation. Cool. Right, so let's speak with him. So we have to go back to Pier 1. So let's do it. Save for right. So do take advantage of the Ethernet systems in the town. It can save you so much time getting around. It really can. It's definitely worth learning. Okay, let's talk to Unreal. So, you seek to forge a pair of titanium kote, yes? Blastonite explained your task to me, and I have prepared everything you need. As ever, should you require aught more, do not hesitate to ask. Cool. Right, so I need to make a pair of titanium kote high quality. So, titanium kote. So, do we have food? No, food's gone. Let's put our food up. Synthesize. Go. Cool. It will be great when I'm actually crafting my 70s set. I'm really looking forward to it because something that brings me a lot of pride when it comes to crafting in this game is the fact that all the gear I'm wearing for crafters and gatherers I make myself. It says all of them say Mifri Menafil on them. They don't have other people's names on them. And I'm hoping as well with my crafting guides and so on that I teach you guys to accomplish the same. That's ultimately what I'm trying to achieve here. I want players to enjoy the game more, to be independent, and also that would then lead to a greater economy in the game. More materials mean lower prices, mean more profit made for everyone, but also just more supply for the demand. So it's like it's a win, 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 win. Like I don't see any losers in this situation. There you go. Easy. Next, let's hand them over. So, are you done with them, Kote, then? Yep. Let's hand over. So it says, a lightweight, lightweight gauntlet of Far Eastern design. Forged with titanium for added durability. I wonder if we'll make, like, an entire armor set. Very nice, Mifri. Just the sort of quality I'd expect from you. I'll attach all the other bits we need, then we can show our work to Master Fugetsu. What would be really awesome is that when you finish these quests, if all the guys in the barracks are wearing the new armor. So let me see what you have forged then. Uh, yes, not only are the scales of exceptional strength and quality, the precision of the joinings is beautiful to behold. I can find no criticism worthy of mention. Uh, too heavy and rigid, and Kote will be as manacles. You show a fine understanding of the importance of freedom of movement on the battlefield. I we simply forged them like the warrior bloke suggested. For veterans like me and Mifri, it, it weren't exactly much of a challenge. I'm starting to wonder if this is really the right path to unlocking my own brand of originality. I want to learn how to make something like them Heavensward Helms, something distinct and with character. Not to be rude, but I didn't come here to hammer out dull bloody pieces like this. I understand your urgency, but the individuality you seek cannot be developed in a day. Uh, that you have learned to craft to your client's needs is a fine start, and we will build upon that foundation. Today's lesson is over. I shall next instruct you in a more uh, practical concerns. So be sure to have a firm grasp of the art of crafting scales. Cool. So let's finish. Like I said, it would be nice if we do like a whole set of armor. So maybe the headpiece next for 68 and then just body piece and legs for or the rest for 70 maybe. So in Futuring your knowledge of Far Eastern techniques, you have learned Manipulation too. Cool. Done. So obviously the next quest will be here um, at level 68, 
obviously we've already got level 68 but i need to get all the other 65 quests done first so anyway guys that's it for this episode thank you for watching and as always goodbye from me and goodbye from mifri bye guys